Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and this week we are finally going to lay out the details on something I know a lot of you have been asking me about, and that's exactly what pair of snakes did we hatch out here that is worth trading for a 1969 C10 Chevy and Harley Davidson combo for shop vehicles. So we're gonna get together with Family Jewels, that's Justin and Jacqueline Laprop, and break down exactly what is going on around here. Check this out. Oh my God, that's cute. Hello everybody, we have Justin and Jacqueline here from Family Jewels Reptile Sales on YouTube and you can go ahead and subscribe to their channel here if you want to kind of follow along with their side of this whole vehicle for pretty exciting reticulated python trade. We've got them online from Oregon here so that you guys can talk to them. Hey guys, why don't you say hey? Hey, hello Garrett. We got you here on our end. Hope we're coming in loud and clear with you. Oh, hi Garrett. We'll say hi. Hi, <laughs> Jasper and Lyric say hi. Hi, Derek. So Justin and Jacqueline were actually breeding ball pythons for kind of a long time. That's sort of how we met, uh, talked on the phone. And it was just around two years ago that you guys got into Super Dwarfs? Yeah, I'm holding the snake that I got from you. This was the one that kind of started it all. Little King, this was my first my first Super Dwarf from you. So how are you guys enjoying it, the addition of some Super Dwarfs and stuff? I love this guy, man. Thank, okay. you. Thank you so much for him. Yeah. I can't wait to get these new babies. I was I was good with ball pythons at first because with my initial fear of them, it was nice because they just sat in my hand. And not that I don't love them because there's so many different marks, so many different colors that I enjoy. I can appreciate all of it. But I like activity and have something as interactive. Interactive, yeah. And they're so smart. It's just Is this guy I like... never I never knew I guess just from the way I was brought up, I don't know. I just never knew that a snake could be so intelligent and they're absolutely amazing. I think he's beautiful. And how crazy is it that like they're not just smarter, but you can almost you can learn to read them and, and tell like what their emotions and feelings are and how. Oh, their body language yeah. just says so much. Yeah, and this thing is like the closest thing that you would get to like a cat or a dog as far as a snake goes. So I wanted a custom shop truck that would actually bring that kind of a value into the project, you know, just run with the whole sort of blue collar thing and, and go with that stuff. And then somewhere along the line, we ended up throwing a Harley in too and having that, that painted with the logo too. So now I'll have a matching set. Man, the whole trade, crazy. I think it's a uh, crazy for both of us, honestly. It's, it's, there's so much more into it than I ever thought that there would be so much more involved, it's costing more, taking more time. It's definitely, I feel like it's taking some years off my life. I don't know if the gray is coming in more because of this project or, or just my age. We've lost, missed the deadline now. I'm supposed to actually be driving it. We're filming this right now with Garrett, you know. Yeah, we should have been already driving or you know, got this over with. You know, since we're supposed to have already exposed what the secret is by now and now that you know everybody's probably watching on Garrett's channel I mean I might as well just tell you and let him show you you know it's a new morph it's a possible new morph here's what happened I hatched out a clutch of snakes from my white diamond uh, male that's his name he's just a a trophy animal, probably the nicest snow uh, as far as being classically beautiful that, that exists anywhere. And I hatched a nice clutch of Superdorf albino 100% het anneries and there was a, a, just kind of a bit of a surprise with two of the animals that hatched out. They're possible scaleless head reject. Well they are scaleless heads, they're not possible, they're, they're they scaleless heads. Scaleless head. Two of them, a pair of them. Are they going to produce a scaleless animal? 
That we don't know for sure. At first when these things hatched, I really didn't think anything of it. You know, sometimes you get uh, just like a, a little bit of a defective baby, if you want to say that, you know, kind of natural uh, birth defects or, or different things where something didn't develop normally. And I thought that's kind of all we were looking at in the, in the beginning. They, they brighten the color, they, they're an enhancer gene. To me, I don't really even care if it produces a scaleless snake. That's going to be a bonus. Just how these things look different, you'll see them when we show you. They look so unique that I'm into it just for the scaleless head part. Just because it, it changes the way they feel, changes the way they look. Then I started talking to some of my ball python breeding friends who were talking about the scaleless head project, which has been the biggest from a financial standpoint, as well as kind of like the most extreme project that's ever been done in ball pythons, and this was the biggest morph of all of them. There are certain things that you look for in a scaleless head uh, ball python because they don't always have perfectly scaleless heads. One thing that they said was that they're a lot brighter. Another thing is that the scales are not as smooth. They actually have a almost like a, a different texture. And with these super dwarfs, you know, when I started looking at it and, and feeling them run through my hands, for a while there I was having everybody that I knew hold these things and compare to clutch mates, and yeah, they do feel different. I mean, obviously there's the scaleless heads. People said that if you flip them over, a lot of times they'll have a split ventral scale down by the vent. So whether they prove scaleless head, whether they make a scaleless snake or not, me, I feel like it's a win-win. If these things do prove to be a new mutation in reticulated pythons, especially in the small super dwarf ones, I mean, what are the what are the possibilities for you and your family? What can this actually mean to you? Yeah, my goodness. I mean, it could take ten years yeah, until might be 10 we years. know. Yeah, even if it's a recessive trait, but you see the scaleless head in the heterozygous form, you know. So yeah, I guess we'll... we're trying to get. It, hopefully, we get it proved out within the next year or two years. You know? Ugh. That's why this is kind of a gamble, but the reason to me it's not a gamble is because of what they are, you know, visually. You can see they're from the white diamond line, and like Gareth said, they might just be complete retards, or they might be, you know, this new thing that everybody on the planet is like, hey, that's awesome, you produced, you know. But. It worries me. I don't, I don't want... The, I don't want the spotlight of me. I definitely don't want fame. I don't care if anybody knows my name. I just... I will take fortune, but I don't, <laughs> I don't want fame. But being part of something that is this big to me is cool. Just think about when people were taking like little lions and tigers or whatever they took or wolves and turned them into what we have today. I mean, we're doing the same thing with snakes. Is that right or wrong? Hey, that's totally your opinion. You know, but I think it's awesome. If you can make somebody not kill an animal in the wild because they see that they're, you know, can be a pet to somebody, maybe that knowledge would help them be like, hey, I'm not gonna run that snake over because, you know, I know a little girl that likes snakes. And you brought up how you would love to produce anneries that were 100% head albino using these albinos. And that realization made me kind of uh, like, Oh crap, maybe I should have kind of held on to this for a little bit. <laughs> okay. I really can't believe you're getting rid of this data thing. Can I? Yeah, I mean, and you said it yourself. You, but I... You've second-guessed yourself multiple times. Yeah, so from the beginning of it, I mean, even more than the prospect of having my own bloodline of a new morph or something like that, I really like the story of it all. You getting together, building this truck, driving it across the country, a classic classic pickup with no air conditioning, by the way, and uh, and bringing it out here. And then, I don't know, there's just something uh, like history to it. You know, you get in and you, you pull the choke out a little bit because it's a carbureted Corvette engine and uh, start that car. And I don't know, it just it has, a, it has a story. It has a kind of a life of its own. As far as the super dwarfs and the retics go, I want to learn from somebody that I look up to and think is one of the best. <clears throat> And that's Garrett. Garrett is the type of person that wants everybody to succeed. And that's what I've seen like in that interview with your parents, 
how you were raised and, and just, you know, the, the, the blue collar. I love that. That's how I am, you know. I, I, you know, I've worked hard to get everything that I've got and we don't have a lot of support and it's hard. But at the same time, that gives us drive to prove people that yes, this is something, just because you don't understand it, just because it's not something that you do or that's the norm, that doesn't mean that other people don't absolutely love it and are passionate about it. All right, you guys ready for the lightning round? We're gonna jump into this. I'm gonna ask you a bunch of random questions so that our awesome viewers can get to know you guys a little bit personally and maybe judge whether they wanna jump over and show your channel a little bit of love and support. So here's the first question. Uh, do you guys prefer coffee or tea? Oh, coffee. Tea. You like dogs or cats? Dogs for me. Yeah, you guys just had that awesome uh, Kane Corso cl er, clutch litter. What's the last book you read? It was either the Bible or a devotional. The Hungry Caterpillar. Hashtag <laughs> mom life. How about your biggest pet peeve? Uh, either like telephone tough guys or cyber bullies. I, I really hate, you know, or anybody that takes advantage of the innocent. Do you have any celebrity crushes? Well, are you a celebrity? Oh, like a crush on you, babe. <laughs> I do have a crush on you. I love my wife. I'm just gonna say Sam Elliott's voice. He's a little aged for me. But I love his voice. Sam Elliott's voice. Okay. I have to start smoking and drinking coffee. <laughs> How about a non reptile related hobby? Dirt bikes or motorcycles in general. Any, time, any type of motorcycle. It's huge motorcycle enthusiast. <laughs> eating. She can eat. Oh my goodness. If okay, it, that it, is a non reptile hobby. I enjoy eating. Yes. Give me some food. Big lover of the food. Surprising skills that we may not know that you have. I'm like so good at everything, it's hard to pick. Oh name. my goodness, and the ego is just, probably just not a skill. What's your best advice for young women? You see those red flags, you listen to them. And learn to fight. Stand, learn to. I think women should learn to stand up. Not like not everybody should go to the into the UFC and you know, get beat up all the Be time. Able to Be able protect to protect yourself. Yeah, I think all women should, and if not protect yourself, just I don't know how you get the confidence. I only know that as a man that you know feeling confident. I think women should just be confident in in, in being a woman, a beautiful woman. What is your favorite all-time vehicle? C10 Chevy like Garrett's getting every year like from 69 like 69 to 72 and I'm dead serious that's my favorite vehicle. You're taking my baby! <laughs> I'm a country girl. Nice old farm truck. Doesn't matter if you get it beat up. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most unique place that either of you have ever visited? I think Guatemala and the jungles of Guatemala when we were down there and I caught that uh, milk snake. Guatemala was unique. I also liked yeah. and Ireland. Ireland. Mexico. It was one of my favorite places, but I'm gonna say Belize. Belize was pretty unique. There's a lot of there's a lot going on in Belize. Yeah. What is your biggest fear? <sighs> Man, I don't know. I can't even say mine out loud, so I'm not I'm not answering that one. Yeah. Okay. I'll cry. I'll start so, crying right now. Punch, my biggest punch the fear. Camper. My biggest fear is probably failing my children somehow. See, I'm gonna think about that and cry now. I don't. I'm not serious. What's the most life-altering event that you've ever experienced? Giving my life to God for sure. Because he, he took away an addiction that I couldn't get away from. I would have to say the six months of psychedelics. Yeah. That was that, before we get. That was before we yeah, get the job. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead and cut that out if you need to. Happened. It did. If I handed it to you right now, tax free, a hundred thousand dollars, what would you do with it? Well, I'd buy a 1969 Chevy <laughs> C10 pickup. Actually, no, I'd buy, probably buy a 72. What's your biggest unachieved life goal? I always want to get better on a dirt bike. One life goal would always be just to throw a super, super, super silly upside down whip, if you know what that is. <laughs> What's you your biggest life? unachieved life goal? Yeah. What's your, what is your goal Get up in life? Here. What does that mean? It means what is something that you haven't done yet in your life that you really want to? I really want to like 
Gnarly whip. She wants to do a gnarly whip too. As high as, as, high as, as, high as his house. Gnarly whip. And gnarly whip. Jasper wants to do a gnarly whip as high as the house. What's your ultimate goal for reptile keeping? If six figures isn't a serious, <laughs> honestly, what I, I would really like to make it a serious business. I would like it if right now I have. Kind of like three jobs, and it sucks. I would love it if my only focus was to, to breed snakes. I mean, ow! <laughs> Easy. Oh my goodness. Man, these kids. Oh. All right, well, that's it. Thank you guys very much for coming on. And Justin, I am looking forward to seeing you roll up in those new vehicles. I wish I could uh, be like flown out and drove with you or something. It'd be a fun adventure, but. It's been a busy summer for me already. I wish I could have made the trip with Ashley. Or not. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where are you guys going? Okay. To, yeah. to hang out with Ashley? <laughs> to come hang out with Ashley is what I meant. And yeah. see the snakes. I'm so jealous that you get to see them first. All bye, right. Garrett. All right, bye, Garrett. Thank you so much. Thank you for the snakes. Thank you for like trusting us with this project yeah we'll have to get the families together sometime soon but you guys take care and you guys take care and we'll catch you next time